need others to lead themselves. Two true leaders create more leaders. They do not create followers. Gung Ho is a book written by Ken Blanchard that draws lessons from nature to share insightful uh, and powerful leadership lessons. The squirrel, the beaver, the goose are our sources of inspiration in this simple and easy to read book. Let's find out what the way, the spirit of the squirrel, the way of the beaver and the gift of the goose are. The spirit of the squirrel. Yavkrit is going to share with us the spirit of the squirrel. So over the course of autumn, the squirrels gather nuts and they try to build stores of nuts. They not see it as a hard work because it's something which will be beneficial for them in the future and it's something which they have to do. So the nuts which they store, they use it as food for the winter. It is the work which they do, it is worthwhile to them the time they spend in it. And it is important as well. So it's uh, not really like they ha they have to do it because they are supposed to do it. So it's like they are beneficiating, they are uh, gaining benefits from it as well. And all of the squirrels work towards it. It's not like this work is assigned to one squirrel or something. The group of squirrels work towards it and they work towards a shared common goal which is going to help all of them in the future, in the winter, uh, to... Uh, by, by gathering nuts over the course of uh, the autumn. Uh, Siddharth is going to share an example of how they followed the spirit of the squirrel to make work worthwhile and important in a client project that they did. The squirrel story teaches us a number of things that directly translates into the workplace. Oftentimes from experience, what I've noticed is that a lot of teams that we have in the institute, students are unmotivated and they simply lack the motivation to make work worthwhile. So one of the major key components that the squirrel teaches us is how to make work worthwhile. There are a number of components that makes any sort of work, no matter the position or the hierarchy at which you are doing that work worthwhile. As someone who leads a team, it is essential that you help team members understand the vision and the big picture. In one of the teams that I am a part of that I head, it is important that in the very beginning you tell them what exactly is going to be their role because a lot of it is in the grey area. A lot of times people don't know what they have signed up for and in, in the middle they realize that something that uh, they did not sign up for is suddenly put on them. So this was the case at least before I took over. So how their work impacts the world, how social consulting or any form of social work helps other people, other NGOs, other organizations. This is something we have to tell them in the very beginning how their work impacts the world. So this is something that goes beyond pure business value and profits. This is something that gives you both intrinsic happiness as well as it helps someone else achieve their business value as well. And then increasing someone's intrinsic motivation, self-esteem, all of these is something that occasionally you have to pitch in so that the team does not lose sight of the final goal. And then defining critical goals. There are certain goals that you have to define in the very beginning itself. Like if we take on a client, their, our goal is to deliver their project no matter how long it extends. Hopefully not beyond a semester, but it should not extend beyond that because that is the time frame that the client has agreed to and the students have agreed to. Anything beyond would simply, I mean the project would be rendered futile. So students have to know that this is an extremely critical goal that cannot be compromised. Things have to be done on time. And then all the shared goals. Oftentimes when we have projects, students don't know the exact scope of the project, nor do the clients. It is up to the team members, the project leads and the consultants themselves to understand the scope of the problem, ask questions to them and then take ownership of those ideas. How you would help a company by being in their shoes, how you would uh, ideally brainstorm and help to improve their that company's stature in society. That is something that our consultants do. So you don't have to, I, I mean as a lead of the team, I don't micromanage them, I don't step into their shoes and tell them at each point you have to do this and you have to do that. You let them take responsibility, come up with creative ideas, they discuss with the client and in most of the times the client is happy with what we come up with because it is the collective effort of the team's brainstorming. Then at the 
final level, there are some non-negotiable values that we uphold. As a social consulting organization, matching the unmet needs of society with affordable solutions is something that is that simply cannot be compromised at any point of our tenure. It doesn't matter if the client is unable to pay. We take it on simply because of the value that they add to society and the value that we believe in that they are doing for society. So values guide all our actions, plans and decisions. And completing the project is a goal. This can sometimes be unmet or sometimes it can go beyond the time time frame. But in case the project is interesting enough and we see enough social value, we will not say no to that because values cannot be unmet at any given point. That is the whole fundamental value on which our organization stands. So this is how I can translate the spirit of the squirrel to something that I am personally a part of. The way of the beaver. Beavers build dams. A dam isn't one big log of wood. Beavers use their sharp front teeth to chop a tree and break the log into tinier parts. They then build the dam one twig, one stick, one branch at a time. They also use grass, mud, any vegetation that is available and rocks. They use the right amount of mud, the right size of twigs or branches, the right size rocks. Basically, they build the dam in the right way. They respect and trust one another and communicate effectively and work together. A beaver knows what to do. It understands a big picture and goes about doing its part one step at a time. Beavers embody the power of action, hard work, technical proficiency uh, and strong work ethics. The, the dams that they build are supposed to be like some of the greatest examples of awesome architecture. How does the way of the beaver translate to the workplace? The way of the beaver is to empower team members to play a bigger role, put individual in control of achieving the goal. So how can this be done? This can be done by creating a playing field with clearly marked territory with clearly defined roles, responsibilities, and rules. Everyone knows what they need to do. So it's also about valuing team members, listen, understand, and act. Listen actively to the team members, respect their uh, thoughts, feelings, needs, aspirations, and dreams, and act upon them. Align, uh, align them with, align their needs, align their goals, and help them uh, with the with with the project or the organization and help them see the big picture. Leverage natural skills and abilities of the team members and at the same time challenge them to stretch beyond their abilities. Now, this is all about shared uh, leadership, shared goals and collaborative teamwork. One example I would like to share is how we are creating this course. We have students and faculty participating in this course. The overall structure and content for each module is created and the team gets to choose, um, you know, every team player gets to choose what they want to speak on, share, uh, what experience they want to share and how they want to present it. So everyone has their own style. Um, so we, we try to leverage the natural skills and abilities of each uh, member uh, with clear guidelines that are shared. Every team player takes ownership and responsibility, comes prepared and presents it in their own way. So and every team player in this context is valued and respected and they play to their strengths. At, uh, for some of us, some aspects of the, the whole process are challenging and uh, we are learning and improvising as we stretch ourselves that extra mile to put in our best. So it's all about shared leadership, shared goals shared vision and collaboration. Tapaswini is going to share the gift of the goose.
many of us must have seen that usually when birds fly they form a uh, they fly in a v shape and the reason why they do this is the bird or the geese which flies in the front uh has to go through more turbulence and it gets more tired and uh, when the uh, geese the the leading geese it flies there the when it flaps its wings it creates an uplift which will help the the other geese which are following to fly with an ease so these geese uh, will uh, move with a common goal of reaching from one place to another which is sometimes as far as 5000 miles and during this process it is not easy because they are they are traveling long distances and they are also flying at speeds of 40 to 70 miles per hour and in this process they honk and they encourage the lead bird to keep going and to motivate them so that they don't fall behind during this process and this is a reminder that you no know, they remind each other that they're all part of one team and they have a common goal to move from one place to another no matter how hard it gets and uh, like and they also encourage each other and they also uh, take turns to uh, lead the team like after the leading uh, geese gets tired it goes back into the v formation and then the other geese which was flying behind comes ahead and it takes that role so this will help them to achieve the common goal of uh, which is in our human terms it is kind of uh, impossible uh, to think to travel such long distances uh, throughout the day but they do it with constant encourage encouragement and uh, support Anirudha is going to share his perspective on how the gift of the goose translates to the workplace, the importance of cheering one another, uh, based on his experience from his uh, swimming practices and competitions from inter-IT sportsmates. When you think about cheering, uh, what comes to mind is a stadium full of people cheering others on, but it's a very small part of what it is meant to be. Yeah, it's supposed to in- instill confidence, boost morale, and energy into the team members the way you go about doing is uh, to appreciate each individual's value and uh, in a timely and responsive manner it should also be unconditional and un- enthusiastic we should not only just uh, congratulate them or support them when they have achieved something but it should be throughout the journey throughout the path so that when they reach milestones and uh, make a ch- small achievements it should encourage them to Uh, make bigger achievements cheering other on also sustains the enthusiasm of the mission so it it helps to carry on the mission of the team forward and uh, it's the right work right way for the right reward drawing from the famous einstein equation e is equal to mc square the enthusiasm is uh, the result of uh, the mission and uh, the product of cash and congratulations that's it colonel a few words from you on the spirit of the squirrel the way of the beaver and the gift of the goose and the leadership lessons that we have learned i would like to compare uh, this session that has just happened involving the, the beaver the goose the geese and the squirrel pairing it with a big corporation or any organization for that matter see every individual has uh, his own part to play in getting the overall result the product uh, which is the end product that is and leading others to lead themselves is by the by itself a very important and a very uh, very nice statement which every professional along his career growth must remember for instance an individual who enters any company at the lowest rung let us say at the floor shop level he knows he learns how to work on a lathe machine he becomes an expert and slowly what happens he 
he starts moving around getting to know the other equipment in place equipments and then over a period of time he becomes a supervisor so now what is happening is the amount of involvement that he had if we take the example of a lamp shade at this level about say uh, 10 meters high this chap knows only this much radius of light that is falling upon his area of responsibility and when he becomes a supervisor this shade goes a little higher and this fellow is able to look at 10 people working down below and therefore the amount of understanding of the organization's way of working in terms of uh, transferring this knowledge to people who join subsequently all those things are taken care of in this professional growth that happens within the individual as a corporation one of the best practices is for those inductees who come directly at an officer level at a managerial level what happens is they are supposed to be knowing what is it that this fellow down below with the 10 meter high shade looks at visible to him that is and therefore the orientation program that is organized for these people orientation at the time of induction involves living with these people at the first rung at the floor i am talking of some production manufacturing engineering company and therefore uh, this lead others to lead themselves primarily embodies the the uh, statement that every individual should be uh, made to realize how important he is for the organization and in order to know that every leader who is inducted at any stage in the hierarchy should know every man's role which is happening he need not be going and interfering in his job but he should be able to do the job and understand this job end of a very enriching discussion hopefully we got perspectives from uh, shiva uh, sir we got from colonel sir uh, prasna ma'am and also the ts uh, we saw different dimensions of leadership how leading from within is extremely essential in today's uh, environment it it all uh, it all starts and ends with uh, self transformation and how that self transformation ultimately results in impacting and influencing the world around